And then what will happen is, Dan, is when you close down the Zoom, <clears throat> it'll automatically be like converting video. You'll see it. Right. Now, what we'll probably end up doing is once that's up, good and good to go, um, maybe just send it to me with WeTransfer or something. Okay. Do you know how to, okay. do you know, can you, do you know how to do that or? Uh, well, I can try WeTransfer. I've done it before. I've, I've got a thing I call Hightail that I use for video transfer. Sure. Of course. Uh, it's basically fine as well. Same thing. It just, it's a, you get a link and you can just download it. Uh, and so where would they find it? Would they find it on the website? Um, just like I, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to get all three of those videos uploaded okay. onto YouTube. Oh, okay. Terrific. And then I'll send an email out through tap and on the Facebook group. So if people are like, how do I get it? Just be like, well, make sure you join tap on meetup.com. I'll say this at the beginning as well. Okay. Oh, well, let's, let, let's get into it. It's, it's ready to go. So I'll admit all so far go. and. Let me get the music. And... Okay. Hey, Dan, uh, maybe it's a good time to maybe remind everyone to please mute their microphones as they're coming in. Welcome, everybody. I'm just going to mute everybody. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, I can't hear anything. All right. Hello, everybody. How's it going? We're going to get started in just about another 30 seconds. And yeah, I can hear myself now. That's important. Okay, everybody, welcome. How's it going, everybody? It's nice to uh, see everyone. A lot of new faces, a lot of familiar faces. My name is Yvonne. I am from the Actors Place. And I'm going to be introducing Dan in just a minute, but I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page with something. Uh, today, what we're going to do is if you have a question, if you have a question, you will see this in the chat right now. If you have a question, please put it into this document. So right now, everybody get onto your computers right now. You can get there like this and just click on this link. And that'll take you to a Google Drive. All that we ask is uh, maybe scroll down a little bit so that you don't all put your questions in number one. <laughs> but if you have questions for today, please make sure to put them there. A video of this whole seminar will become available. I will be recording this seminar. Dan, you are starting recording. Yep. We will make it available in two ways. One, we are going to send it out as a message to everyone on our meetup page. And two, we're going to post it on our Facebook community page. So once again, here's where you put your questions. So if you're coming to us and you've never been to a, you have no idea what our meetup page is, I'm going to send you that link right now. We organize all of our virtual sessions at this link. 
So if you ever want to come to another one of our virtual sessions and you didn't know about it, that's where we come in. Join this group. Make sure you get uh, organizer emails that they'll ask you about that. And that is where I'll send video copies of not just this seminar, but the one we did about how to be an actor and how to make a short film. And if you haven't done so already and you are a Facebook user, please join our community group. It's a private group. So you got to like submit to join, but that is the link right there. If that sounds good to everybody, can I get a smiley face in the chat? <laughs> if that makes sense to everybody, can we get a smiley face in the chat? There it is. Let's get everybody. Let's get everybody. Smiley faces in the chat. Awesome. Now, there we go. There we go. Hey, everybody's going crazy. And just out of curiosity, can everyone please let us know where you are from? So in the chat, can you take a second? And if you're coming from, let us know where you're from. I want to see where around the world we got people. Portland, North Carolina, Vancouver, Calgary, Gibsons, Red Deer, Atlanta in the house. I love Atlanta. Wilmington, Tallahassee, Regina. Oh my gosh, this is great. All international, man. Well, my friends, Albuquerque's back. Dan, you're back. I see you there. St. Albert. Oh my God, that's awesome. Ajax in the house. All right, my friends, thank you for joining us all across the world and from different time zones. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. So the first time I met Dan and he was like, hi, I'm Dan Wilmont. And I was like, it felt like warm velvet caressing a kitty. He had just one of the greatest voices I've ever heard. And so it was no surprise to me that he is a voice actor. Um, Dan is not only a, a veteran voice actor, he's a veteran actor. So you can ask him questions about the industry as a whole. I went on IMDb and Dan's first credit was in 1999. Wow. 1999. He was 57 years old then. And look at him now in 1999. But uh, for all of you that don't know some of his more memorable roles, keep an eye out because you're going to be seeing him, I think, in the upcoming season of American Gods. He got into a biker ballroom brawl with uh, some of the members of the Umbrella Academy. And he and I were in an episode of Psych together, just to name a few of all his amazing credits. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pass it over to Dan. Because he can't see or hear you, how about we all put a lot of gibberish? This will be the way we applause. Can everyone give me a lot of gibberish applause? Let's all welcome the mighty Dan Wilmot. Yay. Thank you, guys. Uh, so what we're going to do is trying to keep the, um, trying to keep the uh, uh, bandwidth as, as small as possible, because I am coming to you from my parents' basement on a small farm in Saskatchewan, where they have high-speed dial-up. Hashtag actor life. <laughs> actor life, yes. Yeah. Uh, so what, I, what I'd like everybody to do, if you could just uh, uh, stop video on your cameras so that we can reduce the amount of, of that way I won't freeze as much. Um, and then we'll have, uh, when we get into the questions later on, uh, we can let, like, get some of you back on. But um, because of the, uh, the way the, 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 the industry has been going and uh, because of the way, uh, because of COVID, a lot more, a lot has changed everywhere, of course, and and that doesn't. That's at least a, a, as much as for for voiceover because a lot of people were starting to work from home uh, for voiceover and how to do that and and uh, and those are the ones that had the head start when COVID came because all of a sudden we could no longer go to studios. Studios are closed. The odd studio is opening up again, but not much, um, and they're uh, really restricting what they're able to do in the studio. So a lot of auditions for sure are done from home. And then from there, um, they may bring in up one person at a time to work within the studio. So understanding A, what voiceover is all about is one thing. Also figuring out how can you at least audition from home and uh, then where do you go from there as, as, as you move ahead? So. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for basically four different categories, four different aspects of it, uh, what the industry is all about. We're going to be, because we only have two hours, uh, it's going to be a very brief look at each of the, the aspects of it, but it'll at least give you an idea what you need to do to get started. And that's the key, either to get started or at least start practicing from home, uh, because that's where that's where a lot of the work is going to be even after COVID is over. We're still going to be working from home. We started beforehand. There's a lot of it going on now, and there's going to be even more once COVID is over. So I think let's just get into it. Let's, let's start off. We got the setup, the training practice, 
promotion, audition, uh, clients, and follow up. And then we're going to finish it off with a, a Q&A. So I'm going to try and keep them each category about 15, 20 minutes. And then whatever time we have left in the final hour, we'll just do questions and answer on that link that uh, that Yvonne gave you uh, on the chat. And I'll, and I'll post that link again a little later on if you came in after the fact. So let's just get right into it. We'll start with the, um, uh, the basic setup here. Uh, things you need to know. You need your space, you need treatment, you need a computer, you need a digital audio workstation, a DAW, or basically it's a program that you're gonna use in your computer and you need a microphone. Uh, two of the most important things are your microphone and your treatment, we'll get into that. Right off the bat, we're gonna start off on your basic setup with a space. You need to find a space that's somewhat quiet. It doesn't have to be soundproof, but it has to be somewhat quiet. Uh, so you want to stay away from anything that makes noise, things like your refrigerator. Um, stay away from um, um, the furnace. Stay away from uh, anything that would make noise. Um, it doesn't have to be soundproof, but just trying to reduce it. Whenever I record in my apartment, even though I have a sound booth, I, I take a knife, I turn my refrigerator off completely, and then I put the knife in the door. And the reason I do that is because I don't remember to turn it back on again and everything spoils. So when I walk by, I see a knife sticking out of it. I know to turn the refrigerator back on. But anything like that, air conditioning, anything that makes noise in your house, you want to be as far away from that as possible. Um, so that's the first thing. Finding a quiet space does not have to be soundproof, just quiet. Secondly, this is most important, is your treatment, because you don't want things bouncing. The sound will bounce off any hard, flat edges. So if you're setting up a recording space, you almost want to make a pillow for it so that a sound is absorbed by the pillows and not bounce. Because when you get the bounce off the hard walls, any hard surface, it sounds echoey. It sounds like you're in a well. And the worse, uh, the more the echo, the worse it, 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 it reverberates. So you want a soft space. The best place for a home studio a closet with clothes in it. That's the best. If you've got some room in there and some half decent light, not fluorescent light, because fluorescent lights make noise as well. Um, but you want some light in there and, and you want to be in a place that's soft. Uh, I've used where I've been in a hotel room where I've just taken a, a, a curtain and I just flip it around my body and that usually works pretty good as well. Um, but you want to have a place that is um, quiet, and you want to have a place that does that roof that absorbs sound. Uh, I have even used uh, cushions on a sofa and literally made a pillow for it. Put the mic inside it and worked like that, just to keep them from bouncing. That the bounce is the worst of it. Uh, folks that are coming in new, um, uh, they're coming in a little bit late. If you could turn off your um, off your video, and that way uh, we don't use up as much bandwidth because I'm on a on a very restricted thing, and I don't want to freeze out on you. And all of a sudden, I'm doing anything. What's he doing now? Anyway, so we get into the treatment, which is keeping things soft and, and pliable so you don't hear an echo. Uh, once you start getting used to things like this, you're going to start hearing them. When you go into a, a room or a building um, uh, or any, even a room in your apartment or your, your house, you're going you're gonna to be able to say things loudly and you're going to hear the echo. Um, if you're going into... Um, um, you, you, we don't normally hear, we, we tune them out, the, the furnace, the refrigerator, we tune those sounds out. So you have to start learning to listen for them because you are going to hear them when you record. So those are the first two things to get started with. Now we move to a computer. Everybody pretty much has a computer. Um, and as long as it can hold a, a simple program, audio program, you're fine. Now, if you don't have a, a, a laptop or a desktop, but you do have a phone or um, an iPad or something like that. There are programs that you can get for those as well. Um, a lot of people are auditioning on their phone. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. There is a technique to it. Uh, we're not gonna get too involved in technique, but there is a technique to recording on your phone. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, after you've got a computer, we're gonna move on to your DAW. Uh, and that's the, 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 the name for a, a digital audio workstation. It's basically, it's a program that you're going to put on your computer so that you can record your audio. Uh, this is important, even if you're just starting out, because you need to listen back to what it is you're doing. 
the, what you want to do is you want to be a real person in a real place, having a real experience. And you want to have your personality. This is something that we train in our classes is that you, you use your personality. Your personality is what's going to be different than anybody else. It's the same with any kind of acting. What you bring to it is what makes you unique. If you try to sound like all the other people on the radio, you're not unique. In fact, they can probably do it better than you can. So your best uh, place to start is start as you. That's how we're going to begin. So you want to start recording things and see if it sounds like you or if it sounds phony. Now, first of all, you're not going to you're not going to sound the way you think you sound because you've been hearing your voice through your head for most of your life, pretty well all of your life actually. So all that goo in your head, you hear your voice through that. It, nobody else hears it that way. That's why when you record it on an answering machine or record it. Um, on anything for that matter, and you listen back to it, you say, well, that doesn't sound like me at all. That's what you sound like to everybody else, just not to you. So you need to learn how to what you sound like and what you sound like doing what you do. All right. So that's why you need an audio uh, program for your computer. Now, there are free ones out there. Um, Audacity is a, is a free one that you can now use for uh, uh, a PC or Mac. Um, um, there's a garage band, which is the one that the, 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 the Apple products use. Um, there's one called Cakewalk. It's free. Uh, I think it's pretty much Windows. Um, Magic Music Maker is a Windows one that, that's free as well. An inexpensive one is Reaper, um, but that still costs. And you can get Reaper for um, uh, Mac and PC and also Adobe Edition. Those are our when you start paying a little bit more for, and then if you want to get into the professional version, there's Pro Tools. You can get a, a, a free version of Pro Tools to start with, but I'm saying if you're starting out, get something like Audacity or GarageBand. That's all you need just to start practicing on microphone and just start playing around. That's all you need. So start with that. Um, then here's the most important thing you need, and this is one of the hardest things to get, is your microphone. Now, all you need, if you've got a, a laptop or a desktop or a phone or an iPad, all you need, uh, the bare minimum, is a, a USB microphone. Uh, that's all you need. Um, and USB microphones have gotten a lot better in the last five years, and they're also a heck of a lot cheaper. I want you to get something that's inexpensive so that it does, you have no reason not to use it so that you will start practicing right away. Uh, even though you don't have a, a professional studio, get something that you can practice with and that you can play around with. Um, the difference between a USB microphone and a traditional microphone, uh, one that has three pins in it, XLR, uh, is that the XLR is much better quality. But if you get a half decent um, USB microphone, the quality is good enough for straight voiceover. If you're singing or you're recording music, yeah, that's a different story. But if you want just voiceover uh, or podcasting or anything like that, a USB microphone is fine. Now, there's a different cost factor involved as well, because a USB microphone, it plugs right into your computer. You don't need an adapter uh, to go from your XLR to an audio interface. An audio interface is going to cost you more but an XLR microphone is going to be a little bit less. And to do an example, a comparison of two of them, um, Audio-Technica 2020, they make a USB microphone and they make a microphone that is um, um, an XLR as well. So I thought that would be a good one to, to try. Now, it's a little more expensive than some people want to pay. Um, the USB version is probably about 200 bucks. The XLL version you can get for about $150. They're the same microphone. The XLR is a better quality because it has more depth to it. But for voiceover, you're not going to really notice that much difference. But it's going to the, the the USB microphone is going to be a little more expensive as you buy it. But the XLR, you're going to need an audio adapter to get it into your into your uh, unit. And to get a half decent one of those, you're looking at a minimum of $100. So which way do you go? To start out with, I would go with USB and you don't even need an uh, Audio-Technica 20. You can probably even go down and get something between 50 and $100. Um, now with COVID, it's a little more difficult, but places like Long and McQuaid used to be able to go in there and talk to their people and they could give you some examples uh, because they have a lot of microphones, USB microphones between 50 and $100 that are uh, not bad. They're not bad. And certainly to start out with and just to try things out and to practice, not bad at all. So 
basically, if you got a computer, your only expense is going to be making your pillow for it. So hopefully you can just use stuff around the house and your microphone. So basically for under a hundred dollars, you, you're started, you're up and running to, and you can even audition with that as long as, you know, you get to know the next steps. All right. That's the basic setup. Let's move on to the next one. Training and practice. This is one thing a lot of people miss out on and they don't understand why uh, it is that they don't get anywhere. Um, the thing to look into is take some classes. Uh, there is lots of classes out there. A lot of the classes are now online because of COVID and um, they are um, have had to make some adjustments. Now, I'm going to talk about our classes just because it's something that, that I know how to do here. Uh, that we, we started in March, uh, we had to cancel a lot of our classes and uh, because we couldn't use the studios anymore. So we were asked, is there any way to go online? Well, we had done some online work before and I have done on like online coaching, which for public speaking and just generally acting and things like that. So we reformatted our classes to be online. The difference is, is we used to do them over a weekend. Now we do them uh, we do six classes, two hours each on Zoom, and we have people perform, um, especially in the, the lower level classes, as if they're acting uh, in front of a microphone. If you don't have a microphone, it's fine. We use a broom handle because it's more about the performance than it is about the actual recording. And generally, I don't believe in, in early classes to record anyway, because I want you to try things and get things wrong than trying to get it right. I found when we would record people, they would try to make it sound really good and they wouldn't try different aspects out of it. Um, in our classes, we also do a record session, which is later on. We used to do that in the studio. We now do a performance presentation on the fifth day of our classes uh, so that people have an opportunity to try uh, the work they've been preparing and then being able to, um, uh, we record that, send them a copy to the person doing the performance so they can see what they did what the analysis was, and then what they did with the analysis. Um, so that's the aspect of, of our classes. We do uh, have classes now, um, and we do all different levels. We start off with a level one, two, we get into um, things like um, uh, level three, get into character development and auditioning. Level four is more about um, um, narration, storytelling, that kind of thing. Uh, we have a level five, which is in preparing a demo. Uh, we also have an audiobook, a uh, couple of audiobook classes, and, and we also do workouts. And our workouts are basically, we have two types of workouts. We have a voice gym that is runs once a month where you get to work out, uh, and we do it on Zoom with a coach. Um, the first couple coming up in February and March, well, I'll be the coach, but then we're going to be having guest coaches coming in beyond that. We also have an audiobook uh, workout as well, which is uh, run with uh, the coach is uh, Don Harvey, who is the person who teaches our audiobook classes, which are some of the most comprehensive audiobook classes in, uh, in, in North America, actually, because it is such a different medium. It's such a different performance for voiceover than regular voiceover. It's not like commercials. It's not like narration. It's not like animation. It's a bit of all of that combined with acting in, a, in, a, in an audiobook class. So we have a whole ream of uh, classes and we also include a business class. We have a regular business class for voiceover and performance. We also have a, a business class for audiobooks because again, it's a different animal. That's what we do at VoiceSpot. And you can go to voicespotwcs.com. And if you wanna get on our mailing list, uh, leave your, your email address there and we will uh, send you our, our, uh, our newsletter. And you can also have a look at the classes that are going on there too. And uh, a bit of a sell job here. If you have VoiceBot 25, if you put that in, you'll get a $25 discount because this year is our 25th anniversary and we're celebrating that. But we only announced that on different special classes like this. That's not announced on the website itself. So that's our classes in a nutshell. We'll talk a bit more about that. It is important to get classes because you need to get some training. You need to know what the heck it is you're doing. Um, when you're talking to um, the coaches of the classes, make sure you find out what it is they do, what's their philosophy, um, who has taken their classes, can you take uh, to talk to any of the people that have taken the classes, et cetera, et cetera. Like do a little bit of homework on it and just see what you think uh, of what they're giving you because there's a ton of classes out there that are good. And there's also a ton of classes that are out there because they're not working. Um, and uh, they just really want you to give them some cash and move along. 
Um, so that's the thing. Make sure that you follow up. Look into uh, uh, searches on on uh, how these classes have been going, and there are some great ones out there. Uh, depending on what you want to focus on, uh, our classes are, are more generic on general performance and on being confident, on being able to speak with a microphone. Uh, and then we do get into specifics of character and narration and audiobook. But there are classes very specifically for animation. There are classes that they're very specifically for audiobooks, et cetera, et cetera. So. Look around, see what's out there and, and find out. Most of the classes are online right now. A lot of them are new and they're just trying to figure things out. Uh, our classes are a lot cheaper uh, because we don't have the studio component anymore. And based on the last couple of conversations with the studios, that's going to be a bit of a while <laughs> before they're running up and running again, uh, at least for a class. They can have one or two people in at a time, but they're not going to be having a, a large class anytime soon. Uh, now, that brings me to TAP and VAP. Now, uh, Yvonne told you about TAP. A lot of you are already familiar with TAP, the actor's place. Uh, the actor's place philosophy is basically a, a giving you a chance to practice your performance, giving you a chance to practice acting, uh, giving you a chance to work with people who are... Um, possibly uh, more professional have been around for a while because all of us are involved in, in TAP, uh, but also working with people that have a different point of view on it too. So you can watch somebody and steal what they do because it's like, oh, I never thought of that. Um, so that's the idea with TAP. I joined TAP, I think a little over seven years ago. And, um, um, and it's been very, very helpful for me. I still go to TAP on a regular basis, not just a coach, but also as a as, as a person working out and, 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 and using it as a, as a gym, I use it as an acting gym. Uh, but three years ago, Yvonne came to me and said, well, is there any way we could add a voice component to TAP? And that we did, and it's called VAP, and it's the voice actor's place. And just because at the time I was fairly busy with travel, um, I would, we only did it once a month. And it starts up again in the beginning early February. So basically uh, one weekend a month, we on the Sunday afternoon, I think one to three Eastern, uh, we'll be doing a VAP session, which is also a voice workout, uh, which I will be involved in because it's my baby. And we have, uh, we take, I think we take it like 10 to 12 people. And you basically, it's a workout. It's a two hour workout. Same as it's the same as tap. It's a gym. Uh, we play with different types of scripts each week. We sometimes we do audiobooks, Sometimes we do animation. Sometimes we do one exercise is how to make this dessert sound really, really good. And that will give you a lot of clues on how to, how to perform, like how to tap into your heart and what you really, really like and how to make sure that that moves ahead uh, so that you can move something forward or so that you can get somebody listening to you to believe what it is you're talking about. Because basically any kind of art is an emotional connection. So whether you see somebody, see something on screen, or whether it's somebody talking and you're listening to them, it's connecting through an emotional connection. So that's the whole objective of it. Um, so that's VAP. And VAP, VAP's a workout, and it's uh, TAP and VAP, as you'll find out when you go to the website, is a very, uh, very inexpensive way of, of working out. TAP is at least once a week. VAP is at least once a month. So lots of fun there. And you make some great contacts and some great people. Um, coaching and coaches, same thing as classes do your homework on them because um, um, there, there's some really good coaches out there and um, there are some people out there that are a little less than <laughs> legitimate. So uh, just make sure you, you, you check them around. And uh, one of the things that, that Yvonne brought up on, on Tuesday on how to be a working actor, which I think is a great idea, get on the, uh, whatever your neighborhood is, get on the Facebook um, sites for, uh, that for voice acting, for animation, for whatever the Facebook group is, and just say, hey, I'm looking for a coach or I'm looking for classes. Um, what do you suggest? Anybody have a suggestion? And you'll get some really good ideas. Um, and also, um, when you start checking out the different classes and looking to see what is around, uh, you can also get a, a response. If you find one class that you you like, if you're, if you're Googling it for your neighborhood or for your town or, or city, um, you can go back onto your, your, your group, uh, your Facebook group, and just say, listen, uh, Bob Smith uh, has got a class. Anybody, any recommendation, you know, what, what do you think about it? And uh, people will let you know. And that's the great thing about the way things have gone because of COVID is now we can work anywhere. 
Um, you can be in, well, I'm, I'm outside of Regina, Saskatchewan. In fact, I'm halfway between Regina and Moose Jaw. And I can work from here. Uh, in fact, the fact that we're doing this class from here uh, says a lot. I wasn't sure we were going to even have a signal. But the thing is, you can now work from anywhere. And that was one of the great things with these classes is we were basically, our classes were uh, in Edmonton, Calgary, Regina, and Toronto and Montreal. And now we are doing classes in, in Nova Scotia uh, in Winnipeg and Vancouver and um, all over. And, and people from all over uh, from Portland, we've had people taking the classes because it doesn't matter uh, where you're taking it from, as long as you get the time right and they're able to, to clink in. But by the classes being that way, also the work can be that way. You can now work anywhere in the world um, from where you are, from your home, You just depending on how well you build your studio. And when you're starting out, as I say, just start practicing, start trying things out. And then as you build farther, then you, you make your studio better, better quality as you start to audition. And then better quality as you start to, if you want to start working from home as well. And that's another reason why you want to start taking classes and that you want to learn how different each of these aspects are as you're ready, as you're ready. You know, when you, when you get more competent in one area, then you move on to the next one. Promotion auditions. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit of performance here as well, because um, uh, I just think that it ties in. And as I say, it, this is just a, a, a brief overview of everything. So this will get you to make some notes and, and get started on, on things to look at and, and, and figure out what's going on. Um, Warm-ups. Warm-ups are so important. And warming up is not just your mouth. I mean, you want to stretch everything. If you've ever tried to talk to somebody in the morning when you first wake up, <laughs> warming up, you want to warm up your entire instrument. So it's first of all, it's your mouth, your face but you need to warm up your whole body because performance is your whole body. Um, if you don't use your body for emphasis, for example, you will start using your throat. And that's why you get the, those Ronnie radio people. Hey there, okay, come over to my house and you'll have some fun. Uh, that's not natural. It's a, you know, you talk with our whole body. So if you get used to talking with your whole body in performance, it'll sound a lot more natural and a lot more like you, which is ultimately what you want to sound like. You want to sound like you because nobody else can copy you. And if they do, it won't be as good as you doing it. So warm up is important physically, vocally, and mentally too. Uh, we use tongue twisters in our classes that are just also mind tongue twisters, not just mouth tongue twisters. They're putting words together that are, that are a problem. Um, and you want to warm up so that when you go into a performance or an audition, you're ready to go. Now, having said that, don't use your audition as your warm up because you don't want to, this is maybe too complicated off the bat here, but you don't want to work out. You want your audition to be fresh. So you want to warm up first, then look at your audition piece. Um, some people will just work the heck out of it. They'll just work it over and over and over and over again. And they want it to be good. And I understand that. But if you make it too good, it won't sound natural again. It'll get very stiff and you'll have, here's a trick for you. When you come up with one way to do it, do an opposite way, just to break it up, to do it something different. Maybe you'll find an idea doing it that way. Um, for pros, I say, if you're doing many more than five different takes uh, on the audition, you're probably working it too hard. Uh, and if you're working with a coach, they'll probably say, okay, that was great. Now do something completely different. And you go, what? But you need to break it up. You need to change it around so that it, it, it can sound fresh. And the more you change it up, the more ideas you will have in just talking about what you're doing. Um, when you would go into a studio for auditions, which are not happening a whole lot right now, um, you only get two kicks at the can. So they'll give you the script. A lot of times they won't give it to you until you walk into the studio uh, or the waiting room anyway. They'll give you the script and you've got about five minutes to look it over. And I'm talking commercials mostly here. These are 30 second, 60 second commercials. Of, you look, look over it uh, for, 30, for about five, six minutes. And then they bring you in and they give you two shots at it. They give you the first shot and they'll either say, uh, I really like that, Dan, but could you maybe slow it down and make it a little more serious? And then you get your second shot. Uh, or they say, wow, that was great. Do you have anything else? 
And of course you always will because you want both takes. Uh, and that's when you're having a different, uh, different style, like having two different styles for that audition. That's all you get when you're in the studio. In most cases, if they got a little more time, they might give you more, but in most cases you get two kicks to the can. That's it. Now, when you're doing it from home, yeah, you can record as many auditions as you want. You can only send in two, but you can record as many as you want. I caution you on doing that because that's where you wear it out. That's when you make it stiff. That's when you make it too worn out. So you want to keep it as fresh as possible. So A, that's why you don't warm up with your audition. And B, do your audition three or four times. Do something opposite. Then maybe do something a third way. Like mix them up. Like get them on and then just listen back to them and just see what sounds like you on a good day, right? Uh, you're, not trying to, you're not trying to be all things to all people. You're trying to bring you to that piece of script. You talking to somebody you know on that piece of script. We all sit back and we do it even as pros. We sit back and say, what are they looking for? <laughs> they don't even know. They have no idea what they're looking for. It's a fishing expedition. So bringing yourself and your idea of the script, they'll give you some breakdown. They'll give you some ideas, a, a young father talking to his child or something, but they won't know exactly what they're looking for. I've had, uh, I've gone into auditions where the person's name, they say, we're looking for a Bob Smith type. And I go walking in and who's walking out? Bob Smith. <laughs> and Bob Smith doesn't book it. So it's a style, it's an idea. So you're bringing yourself to that idea, to that script, talking to somebody that you know, okay? That's the key. And that's what's gonna make you stand out. If you're trying to be like everybody else, you're on a smorgasbord. Any, all you can eat, 9.95. You don't wanna be on the smorgasbord. You wanna be on a menu where you are 99.50 or whatever, and that's on special. Um, you want them to ask for you by name. I, I, you know, you think we can get Dan Wilmot for this job? That's what you want them to do. Well, I want them to say Dan Wilmot. You want them to say, put your name here. But the thing is, is if they get to know who you are, uh, that's what you want, because that's when you're going to command uh, better jobs and better money. Uh, so that's where you ultimately want to get to. So why not start doing that right off the bat in your auditions? Start working on who you are and what you know. That's where you start, uh, because that's what's going to make you unique. And it doesn't matter how little or how much experience you've got. Start with that, because also, here's the trick. It'll make you more confident quicker. If you're trying to be somebody else, it takes forever to get confidence. And take, in fact, I think they say it takes three to five years to get confident trying to be somebody else. And then eventually, after five years, you realize, oh, I'll just be me. And then you're confident. Uh, it doesn't matter how shy you are. Start with who and what you know. That's going to make you confident a lot quicker. Okay? So... Moving on from auditions, demos. You're gonna need demos. This is your calling card. That doesn't have to be a long drawn out thing. 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds initially is all you need. You need about four or five different pieces on there. They don't have to be full commercials or full pieces. They only have to be about eight to 10 seconds each. Um, and it's basically four, three or four things that you can do well. You being a mom, you being a librarian, you being a, like, but it's not you doing three things the same. It's you doing three or four things that are somewhat different. And understand we've got a lot of different personalities in us. And that's just not because we're crazy actors or performers. It's we all have it. Think about how do you talk to your dad? How do you talk to your dog? How do you talk to your siblings? How do you talk to your spouse? You know, we talk to each of those people or animals a different way, but they're all legitimately us. It's all, that's who, it's who we are. It's still who we are. We're not, yeah, it's a little bit silly the way we talk to the dog, but we're not being silly. We're just being us in a fun, in a fun, playful manner. The way we talk to our boss is not anything the way we talk to our seven-year-old, or if it is, you've got a great job. But those two things are both legitimate. How you talk to your boss is a legitimately how you are. How you talk to your seven-year-old is legitimate how you are. And so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for each of those legitimate voices that you have in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an emotional state. It doesn't have to be big. It can be, you know, friendly. It can be sensual. It can be 
angry. It could be if you do that one more time, or please, I need a raise. You know, if you come up with those different aspects of it, just three or four of those, that's all you need to get started. Now, I've talked to a lot of the casting people since COVID has happened. They realize it's harder to get a demo made because a lot of the studios aren't open anymore. Um, so if you make a demo, I would get out there and listen to other demos out there. If you go online and listen for uh, voiceover demos for commercials, voiceover demos for narration, voiceover demos for audiobooks, voiceover demos for um, animation, anything that you want to do for voiceover. Each of those demos are separate. You can't put them all together. I've had two, three, four minutes demos sent to me that has every possible idea all stuck together. Nobody's going to listen to it for more than 10 seconds, except your mom. That's the only one because they know right away, if they have to listen to 50 demos, they're going to listen to it five seconds and they'll know whether or not, hmm, interesting or no, not the right one. Oh, no, no, no. Because they don't have time. They'll listen to five, 10 seconds. Nobody's going to listen to it beyond that. So your best stuff's got to be first and it's got to be you and who you are. So that's what you're looking for. So what casting has said, okay, we understand they don't have professional demos, uh, but you can record them from home, put something as clean and as diverse as you can. So you've got the, the three or four different styles, but understand if you're putting in your amateur demo, it's still going to go up against professional demos. So if they're listening back and forth, they understand that you don't have the studio and they do they're still gonna sound a little bit better. So if you can get somebody to help you who knows a little bit more about uh, production or knows a little bit about editing uh, or can help you out with your, your home studio demo, great. The, the bet, more you can spend on it, the better. And, and listen to some of the ones online because you're gonna hear some really good ones and some interesting ones. Uh, but really you don't need to go more than 30, 45 seconds. They're not gonna to listen to it anyway. Um, you hopefully will have them listen to five seconds. And when you down to the, the last five people, they'll might listen to you 10, 15 seconds. They know whether or not you are what they're looking for. Now, when you're doing your demo, make sure you can do what's on your demo. So many times I hear demos that have had this wonderful production and it's beautiful. It sounds amazing, but can you do that demo in a studio in two takes? Uh, I've had many studios call me up and say, okay, this person I think would be quite good, except her demo isn't anything like she is. <laughs> so that doesn't help you because they hear your demo and you can't do it. It doesn't work for anybody for that matter. Uh, you, so you want a demo of things you can do and you can do well. So that's what you're aiming for. And finding places to do demos, people to help you. There's lots of people out there. Just, just play around with it a little bit. Again, this is part of the process. Once you've got your demo, you need a rate card. Now, what a rate card is, is basically how much do you charge for what it is you do? And that's something you can look up into. Um, there are various sites online. Uh, Voices.com has some. Um, there's various sites online on, on various rates, just simple rates. Because you're starting out, yes, you don't have to, you can, you can do some more, uh, volunteer work, and I would call it volunteering work as opposed to working for free. Do not work for free. Uh, if you're volunteering or helping out a friend, we'll talk more about this when we get to the business section, but you want to be able to, because it's now about your brand. It's not about how many years you've been doing this. It's about what do you sound like? Like, what is the image that I get when I close my eyes and hear your voice? What is that? Is that like a bird singing in the trees or is it like some guy, you know, who's guttural digging a ditch? You know, what are you sounding like? And if that's what I want. That's what I'm going to hire. I don't care if you've been in the business 10 years. Uh, the only way that, that experience helps you is in the, how long it takes you to get the job done. Um, but if you're newer at it, they're, they're, you know, you can charge base salaries. Even, even the unions have a, what they call scale. And then as, as more experience or in, more in demand, they you do double scale or triple scale. So there's nothing wrong with, but, but have a base fee for what it is you want to do. If you're going to do commercials, find out what a fee would be for your local. If you're in a small town for a 30 second commercial, it'll run on the local radio station. What would your fee for that be? What would your fee be if the, it's running in your uh, province or state? What would the fee be if it's running in, in just uh, your region? Half, half of wherever you are, or what would your rate be if you, it ran in the entire country? And how long is it running for? 
Uh, if it's running for the rest of your life, A, do you want it to run the rest of your life? Some of the worst work I did ran for years and years and years. And I'm thinking, ah. Uh, but if it is going to run for a long time, you would charge them a little more for that. But figure that out as you're going in. And there's so many resources online for those kind of things now. Uh, when we started out, um, actually, when we started Voice Spot, which is in 1996, did I say it's our 25th anniversary this year? Yay. In 1996, it was a resource because a lot of this information wasn't available uh, online. And uh, the classes actually came out of the fact we were a resource. So, uh, but now you can find so many things online. Come up with a rate card because when you're starting out, there are some people that'll take advantage of you and say, well, what do you charge? And you'll say, oh, I don't know. What are you paying? And they'll say, oh, one of these people. Okay, good. Well, listen, we'll give you $25. It'll take you 10 seconds. That's like hundreds of dollars an hour. And you say, okay, who's getting the better deal? They are, obviously, because um, chances are it may take you more than 10 seconds. But there's a fee because you're not just paying for the amount of time it takes you. It's using your brand. They are using Dan Wilmot's voice or Dan Wilmot's sound or Dan Wilmot's essence. They're using your essence and they're going to be marketing it. Uh, Coca-Cola is just not a, a tin can. It's a, you know, it's a whole marketing aspect of it. There's a, there's a whole feeling to what Coca-Cola is. So when they're using your voice, they're using your essence, your feeling and developing it accordingly. Um, so that's what you've got to start thinking about when you're doing voice work. They're using your essence. They're using your brand. Uh, and that's why you need to charge for everything. Uh, but figure out a, a price rate. Just say, uh, okay, uh, we're doing a commercial. What will, you, what will you charge for that? And you say $250. And they say, okay, well, we got seven of them. Uh, we don't have much of a budget. And you say, well, okay, I can give you a break. If you're going to do seven of them, I'll charge you maybe $200 a pop for each of them or whatever. But yeah, find out what the, the prices are first. Because as long as you know, if you're talking from a point of strength and you're talking from a point of knowledge, then they're going to treat you better. If you're saying, I don't know, whatever you want to pay me, not everybody will take advantage of you, but some people may try. Okay. Rate cards are important. Look them up, find out more about it. Um, oops. What do we got here? I can't see it because the thing's in the way. <laughs> Social media. Um, getting your, your information out there uh, is important. Um, we're going to start talking about, I think, um, clients and follow-up anyway. So that sort of ties in with all of this as well. Um, where do you find work? Uh, and that's how part of your marketing and your, and your promotions as well. Um, who you are and what you know is where we're going to start from, from your performance aspect of it. But adding to that, who and what you know. So where do you work now? Um, who are people that you volunteer for now? Who are people that you've worked with before? And what have you done uh, or what do they do that they could use somebody with voiceover? To think about where is voiceover? What is it? It's everything audio. Uh, voiceover is on the internet. Voiceover is on websites. Voiceover is on commercials. Voiceover is on the radio, on TV. It's on um, streaming. It's everywhere. Like anywhere there's audio is voice. You walk in a store, there's voiceover. Um, and coming up with those ideas uh, of businesses are where you can start from, particularly if you're starting with people that you know. If you worked in a, in a store and you're thinking, you know, we, we play music all day, but maybe we could have some messages that we could play as well. And I could do that for you for, you know, whatever. Um, or if you've got, um, uh, you're working at a company and they do training videos. I could do those. Uh, I mean, you might have to do a sample for them so that they know that you, uh, but you know, that's something you can practice if that's something you think you could, you would do and you would like to do. Because the people that you know, if you can do a good job for them and they already know you, you're basically building your team. You're building your team with people you know. So you're adding to that team. It's almost like dropping a pebble into a, a, a pond. You know, you've got the rings coming out. Well, you start with the who are closest to you. Uh, nothing wrong with doing work for your family, uh, doing work for your family's business, doing work for um, whoever. They're going to probably ask for you to do it for free, but you know, always do, always do a trade, always get something for it, um, because it is business. You're not trying to to take the advantage of them. You're just doing 
of running a business. So trying to find places that you can do this work already. Um, there are more things that you can do to get more voice work down the road, but start off with who you know and what you know, what you already know. Because if you've been working as a, a dental assistant for 10 years, you probably have some ideas on pronunciations, on certain aspects of it. So you're not only just reading the script that they have, you'd be able to put some intention and understanding into what you're talking about. And let's face it, if you're connecting with somebody on an emotional level, understanding and connecting is going to make them listen to you more than if you're just reading a script. If you're just reading a script, people get bored of that very, very quickly. So who and what you know is a great place to start. Then we have things like pay to play. Pay to play are sites that are sort of like agencies uh, online. Um, and they charge, I don't know, four or $500 US a year. And uh, they do have sales a couple times a year. But anyway, you go in and they send you scripts that fit in your category. You tell them what your categories are. You know, I'm a young woman. I'm 20. My voice sounds like 25 to 30. Um, um, you know, you give them some ideas. They have a breakdown for you. And then you, they, you pay them, I guess, say $400, $500 US a year. And then they send you auditions. You attend the auditions. Um, and generally, you have a uh, you put a proposal together as to how much you want to charge for whatever the project is. Sometimes they, they say this project pays $500. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, those are pay to play. Now those, um, some of them are a little bit, uh, read the fine print before you sign up, read the fine print. I mean, they're, 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 their business is trying to make money as well. But make sure that you don't get, you know, that you're, you understand what you're getting into. Now, the thing about some of the pay to plays like voices.com, uh, voices123.com, places like that, uh, you don't have to have a paid membership. You can be on, you can have a membership on it. You just won't, they'll send you auditions as to what you could have done if you did have a paid membership. But what you will have is they will send you scripts and uh, you can see what, what's going to sort of out there. So, the great thing about that is it'll give you scripts on a daily basis or every few days that you can practice on uh, until you're ready to join. I would wait until there's a sale. Like sometimes they have a sale where there's half price or hundred dollars off or whatever. And if you're going to join, if you want to try them, wait for one of those sales and then try them for either six months or a year. Um, I think one time they've offered me, I, I, I belonged to both of those sites, by the way, in the early 2000s, so to 2004, 2004, to 2007, 2008, and did fairly well with both of them. Uh, but they changed the algorithms because they wanted more people involved. And, uh, and then because of some of the algorithm changes, I didn't think they were very upfront. And, and uh, so I stopped using them. But um, um, some people do very well with them still, even now. And uh, so just be aware. Uh, one time they tried to get me to come back on and they offered me a six month deal um, for like 200 bucks or something like that. Um, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give it another try. And I tried it out again. So if you get a deal, it's, if you want to try it out, I, I if you are going to do it, do it. Like, don't think, well, okay, I'll pay the $200 and I'll try it, but you don't really get to it. Don't pay any money until you're ready to start working at it because you do need to work at it and you do need to follow up. This is a business, right? It's a business. You need to do the work and you need to do the follow-up for it. So, um, that's very, very important. Um, so that's the pay to play. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of pay to play out there. Um, but like I say, those two, those are the two main ones. Uh, those are the two that I would, you could probably look into at least now and you can do it as a, as a freebie as well. Um, okay. Just checking my time here. Um, next to get to is agents. Um, Getting an agent can be tough. Um, you're you're, you're going to need a demo and you're going to need agents you want. The thing that differs with agents with voice than acting, acting, you have one agent. Um, and it's generally an agent that you work with in whatever area you're in. Um, so in Canada, for example, you would have one agent for Canada. Now, some of us have an agent in Toronto, another one in Vancouver. I have one in Toronto, Vancouver, and Los Angeles. But it's still for on camera, you don't want people sending you for the same thing. Um, for voiceover, you can have agents in different markets because uh, most voiceover agents um, look after the market that they're based in. Now you do have um, national, I'm just gonna sneeze here, excuse me for a moment. 
because now having said that, I don't have to sneeze anymore. It's all magic. Um, if you live in, let's say, uh, Portland, um, and you have a voiceover agent in Portland, that's fine. But you could have another voiceover agent in Toronto. You could have another one in New York. You could have another one in West Virginia. You could have. Um, right now, I'm down to three. But there, there have been times where I've had five agents in different parts of the world uh, for voiceover. Um, and um, and now that we're doing things online, you are able to work more internationally than we've ever been able to do it before. Uh, I've always been very lucky to be able to work internationally, but I mean, it, it's taken a lot of work to set that up. But with the way the internet is now and the way um, the studios are, home studios, when I first tried to build a home studio, it was going to cost me 25 grand. <laughs> and I went, I can't afford that, so I didn't do it. So I ended up making a deal with an existing studio and, and it worked out much better. But now for that same studio, it would probably cost me $1,500, maybe 2,000 at the most. Uh, and that was, a lot of it was overkill of stuff I didn't need. So you can now build a half decent home studio for under $1,000, probably under $500. I do know people that are working from home studios that paid less than $500 and they have a professional international home studio that they're working on. Uh, out of and are, are doing a fair bit of work. Agents you look for when you are ready, when you feel that your 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 demo is working and um, and you're up to snuff. Doesn't mean you can't um, send your demo to agents, and ask them about it. Um, initially, you're probably going to be dealing with with non-union. What I would do, and uh, this is something we talk about in our classes and our business aspects of it, is do R and D. Find an agent that you want to work with in a market you want to work in. Uh, and I would call them up, do your homework, find out who the agent is, what they, what, what kind of things they do, and just say, listen, I am new to the voiceover industry. I've just put a demo together. Uh, I would really love to pick your brain for about five, 10 minutes if you can, and just get your, your ideas on how I can make my demo better and how I can you know, work in this business. And most agents do not want to get a demo from you uh, because they don't want to tell you your crap. They don't want to say you'll never work in this business. They do all the time, but they don't want to do that. They don't like doing that. But if you call them and say, I'm new to the business, I've just worked on my home demo, I'm just working on a demo, I'm working in a home studio, I really respect what you do and have some reasons why, like people that work with them or whatever, uh, and say, I'd love to be able to pick your brain for five, 10 minutes. Um, then they're helping you. Agents like to help people. That's why most of them are agents is because they like to help people. Um, and they will, if they've got the five, 10 minutes, and frankly, a lot of them do right now, um, they'd be more willing to talk to you about your demo, about your career, about what you need to work on, uh, and a little bit how they work. Uh, then if you just sent them a demo and say, uh, would you take me on? Chances are they're not even going to listen to it if you send it in and just say, will you take me on? If you talk to them about it, A, they're going to listen to your demo because you're not asking them for uh, to take you on. You're asking for them to give you a critique and help you get make your demo better. So they've got a vested interest in you already, and they're hearing your demo. So even if you're new and they think, oh, well, this person might do all right. Um, so you're making a connection, and they're going to remember you. And I normally prefer people to do this in person, but... That's not the case right now. So doing it over the phone or Zoom or Skype or whatever, again, they may be less likely to do it. I haven't really tried it right now with, with this format, but certainly finding a way to connect with them, a real person talking to a real person is always going to be a better connection than just sending them an email. It's a little more nerve wracking, but again, this gives you an in that's not as nerve wracking because you're just asking for some advice. You're not asking for them to take you on. And keep in mind, they're not giving you a job when they do take you on. You're working as a collaborative team. You're building your team. That's what your agent is as part of your team. So you want to, that's what you're, you know, you're looking for a salesman is what you're looking for. But that aside, it still freaks some of us out. So talk to them about just doing an R&D, just doing a fact-finding mission to find out how you can uh, get better at it. And, and if you talk to one agent in town, talk to a bunch of them. 
doesn't matter. You can say the same thing. You don't have to say, yeah, I talked to Bob Smith over at Bob Smith Agency. You don't say that. I just say, hey, I'm a new voice talent and I've just done a demo at home and I want to get into the industry and I just want to see what the opportunities are like. What do I need to work on on my demo and what do I need to work on on my performance on, on to able to move forward in this community? Uh, and just make notes and don't be afraid to send them a week or two later a you know, Starbucks card or whatever, just say, thanks for the, you know, you don't have to be more than five bucks, but just, just let them know, thank you for taking the time and keep that connection going because, you know, they'll probably say, yeah, and yeah, when you get your new demo done in six months, send it to me and uh, we'll have another chat. You're building a relationship. And that's what the, any kind of business is, is building relationships. This is just another way to do it, particularly when you're new. The key thing is if, if you do some of these things when you're new, a lot of the pros don't do this. They get lazy. They don't do warm-ups. They don't do, um, uh, you know, they don't, they don't take the time to make relationships. They just go do it. And that's what's going to give a, an amateur or a new person an advantage by doing some of the work that some of the pros don't do anymore. Working from home. Okay. You're running a business. <laughs> so um, start taking, uh, make notes. Um, you're going to create a voiceover client list. Um, if you know how to do Excel, great. If you don't, just take a piece of paper. If you're like me, doing a piece of paper and making notes on it. Don't be afraid to, if you have an audition, write down who the audition was for, what you did, how it went, uh, it was, and did you follow it up? Um, clients and follow-up are two of the most important things uh, for for building on your business. Again, we're building a business by building relationships. So follow up and keeping track of who's who. Um, if you have a conversation with somebody and they hire you and you do a session for them and something, something up, make notes about what you talked about. Make notes about, um, um, you know, just anything that you can refer to later and they'll keep it fresh in your mind as well. I'm just gonna, I'm going to put down here because I don't know that I know there's a lot of new people in here. I'm just going to try and get into the chat room here. Holy smokes, there's a lot of chatting going on. I'm going to see if I can. Um, um, I'm going to put the question link back in there again. So if because I haven't checked it and I don't know if people are still asking questions or not, but ask questions on that on that link there, and uh, that way. Um, uh, that way we can get to the questions in just a few moments here. Uh, I just want to follow up with the, the, the clients and the follow-up. That's is so, so important because that will help you build uh, your, your community and build your team. Uh, people like working with people they like. So if you like somebody, keep in touch with them. Send, their, send them a birthday card. You, know, you can do it at e-cards nowadays. You just, just keep in touch with them. Don't have to keep in touch with them every day, but every few weeks. Now, there's a fellow that, that studied with me years ago, and he is brilliant. Now, mind you, he came from a, a sales background, which I'm sure is what helped him. But what he does now is he sends out one of those constant contacts every time a holiday is coming up. Just before, maybe a month before Christmas, he'll send out a constant contact that says, hey, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And I know it's crazy right now, but if you have a last minute job and you need it done in 24 hours, here, you know, here's my demo, whatever. And he has, a, he has he, this is from his client list that he's built uh, over the years. Uh, if he does something, uh, just did a, a, a documentary for NASA. Um, uh, if you'd love to have a, uh, you know, you'd love to have a listen to it, here's a link that kind of thing. He sends, he has his constant contact and I have no idea how many names are on it, but I'll bet you it's thousands. And he sends it out before every holiday. Wanted to wish you a happy Valentine's day coming up in just a couple of weeks. You got a last minute turnaround. And, and here's the thing. He's got a home studio that can do that. And he, if you're going to promise a 24 hour turnaround, you have to be able to deliver a 24 hour turnaround. Now his rates are much higher now because he gets a lot of work. Um, but I'm still on his list and I still see it all the time. And he sends it out before every single holiday. Mother's Day is just two weeks away. If you got any last minute voiceover work, 24 hour turnaround, send it. And brilliant. It's just brilliant. And he's the, the epitome of taking your clients and doing the follow up. All right. Um, how are we doing here? I said an hour and I went over. So, anyway, so that's the first. I'm going to get out of this site here and go to the questions if I can find them. Um, cause I know they can, um, uh, oh, did you not get the question link? I can do it again. Cause I, I copied it and pasted it. 
there. There's the question link. Okay, I'm gonna try and get into it here. And, uh, and I happen to have seen some names on here that I know. And I just like to say hi to everybody that I know. Uh, is that it? Holy smokes. Yes, that is it. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and do as many of these as I can. I'm sure there'll be more that'll be adding up as we go. Is there a type of voice that is not good for voice acting? No, no, no. And that comes back to what I talked about earlier on. Everybody is unique. And that's what you want is you want something special. If your voice is growly and <laughs> animation or you know, character, if your voice is high and squeaking, animation, care. I mean, there's the thing is, is you want to be unique. And I'm not saying every voice is a good voice for, for voiceover. It's that your voice is a good voice for voiceover. Where you're going to excel is your personality. It's not the voice. Think of your, your unit as your whole body is your, is your instrument. Your voice is the speaker. That's all it is. The personality is what's going to come out. And it's what's coming through your speakers. So regardless of what your voice is, it doesn't matter. It's your personality. If you have absolutely no personality and a beautiful voice, well, you could say this is CNN and still make a lot of money. But otherwise, it's your personality. Whatever your voice is, there's a, a place for you as long as you're genuine. Okay? If you're doing animation characters, uh, um, an animation character that doesn't have an emotional range is just irritating. If you cannot laugh and cry and, and be sad and emotional as an animated character, you're boring and you're probably irritating. Um, okay, why don't the directors, producers know what they want when they go to an audition? Because they've got to do it yesterday. We need the script to yesterday. Okay, we are auditioning tomorrow. Okay, I'll pound something out. Uh, and what are you looking for? Well, we want to have something sort of, you know, sort of like a mom or something like that. Okay, I'll pump out something up sort of like a mom. Da, 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 da. Okay, here it is. Take it in. And they'll say, okay, we need 50 people that can sort of be like a mom. Sometimes they're very specific, they know. Most times they have no clue. It's a fishing expedition. Oh, she was good. Oh, she was really good. Well, that's not really what you're looking for. No, no, but I really liked her personality. That was, that was, bring her back. I want her again. Um, it, it's like anything else that's done very fast. It's done very, very quickly. They got to have things done yesterday. And uh, when they're bringing in the auditions, they're doing 25, uh, 50 people, whatever it is. And then they have to decide out of those 25 or 50 people or 25 or 50 auditions that have to be sent out. I mean, that's the problem with COVID right now. You'd think it would be quicker. It's not because they've got to get all these different people and all the different demos. They have to listen to them and ah. Um, should your demo have a single focus? Uh, yes, definitely have a single focus. If you are if you're good with uh, uh, accents and stuff, you can sort of allude to it a little bit. But if you put too many things on a demo, they're not going to hear it. Uh, we talked about when we talked about demos, 30 seconds to 45 seconds. The only person who's going to listen for it, past the first five to 10 seconds is your mom. And even then, they're just going to say they did. They didn't really. Um, so, yes, single focus. You have a uh, commercial demo. And by the way, uh, I know most people want to do animation because that's a way for them not to be themselves. Commercials is where most of the money is. Uh, so everybody should have a commercial demo. Okay. I know you think you're selling out, but don't think of it as selling. You're sharing information. And that's the same with any kind of performance. You are sharing information. I don't care if you're, if it's a product or if it's just the fact that you're trying to tell them that you're emotional and oh my God, my dog died. Um, so yeah, make it very specific. Uh, do an accent demo, do a, an animation demo, do a, 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 a an audiobook demo. Um, Okay, just gonna keep. I'm, do, I'm multi. I'm multitasking because I am a clever boy. Uh, admitting people, people are still trying to get in here. Uh, okay, good. Okay, next one. Um, oh, got to get rid of that. Perfect. Okay, does your uh, does your commercial and or film TV agent also handle your voice work, or should you have a separate agent for that? It depends on where you are. Uh, some some do, some do not. Um, my uh, Ontario, my Toronto agent. Uh, the agency has a voice uh, agent and an on-camera agent. Uh, my Vancouver agent does not. 
they just have they're just on camera and in in the states in los angeles I have a voice and i have it on camera and they're separate as well so it really depends the smaller the community if you're coming working in regina saskatchewan um chances are your agent will handle everything um uh, so it depends on, on the community. And uh, some agents will tell you that's something when you're, you're interviewing the agents, because you're interviewing them. Keep that in mind. When you're interviewing the agent, you ask them how confident they are with their voiceover aspect of it, how confident they are with their on camera if you're doing both. Uh, sometimes you can't get an agent unless you take the same agent to do both. Sometimes they have that requirement. Um, Hello, Dan and Ovan. Uh, thanks for the seminar. I speak with a natural accent and I've been having trouble when auditioning. Uh, get get over the fact that um, get over the fact that people say that because you have an accent, you can't work. Bullshit. Um, this time is this is yes. Work on getting on, on neutralizing your accent, but don't lose your accent because that's going to make you specific very specific. And also, if you can uh, do good uh, voiceover in that language, do both. I mean, I would have them both. And there are there are services. I know definitely there's two agencies, large agencies in Toronto. They do non-union uh, uh, international languages. Um, but yeah, if you, if you it's, again, it's your personality. It's not what you sound like. Uh, if you've got a great personality and you have a Latino accent, so what? If they want that personality, they're going to hire you. Some people say, "Now nah, you got too much of an accent, you can't work in this business. Bullshit. Um, you hear people all the time on television with an Aussie accent, with a, with a Swedish accent. With a, it just, it's the personality they're looking for. Um, you're going to have small-minded people. You're always going to find small-minded people that tell you you can't. Our job is to figure out how we can. That's our job. Because if you listen to people tell you you can't, you'll never do anything. So go for it. Um, have you or anyone else heard of Casting Call Club? I do not know them. If so, have you ever went to made auditions there? No, I have no idea. Uh, that's something I will look up though. Um, I, I don't know, and maybe we can post it. Uh, uh, I'll check with Yvonne, because I know there's ways that he can post stuff on his, his site as, later on as well. Um, is it better to aim to use accents and unique voices over impression? If you do unique ones, if, if, they're, if they're good, if you're doing bad audition, uh, bad accents, unless it's part of a character and it's bad for a reason, don't do them because they can get the real people to do them as we just talked about before. Uh, we can get somebody who really can do that accent with a personality. Uh, there was a while down in the States, remember in LA when, when I was down there that there was uh, for uh, video games, they were trying to get, when they had uh, Germans for doing second world war, they did not want a real German accent. They wanted the um, if anybody remembers Hogan's Heroes, they wanted the um, those kind of accents, and they're all stereotypical accents. Uh, and there's still a bit of that going on where they want the stereotypical accent, they don't want the real accent, but that's becoming less and less because a lot of that stuff's being called out, and it's about time, to be honest with you. Um, uh, because it, it, all it is is tongue-in-cheek and it's a joke, it's a wink-wink idea. So yeah, if you do an accent and you do a legitimate accent, great. If you don't, don't <laughs> because it's you're just going to be considered low class and 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 an amateur you know if you do really good accents great and there are people out there who do great accents um, uh, da -da -da -dum. and I'm, I'm giving you opinions here too and I'm, i apologize for that uh any low class tips for creating a good space egg cartons on wall to absorb sound i'm at the farm and we, we're joking about that all the time because we're getting those big cartons uh hanging moving blankets moving blankets yes Moving blankets are amazing. In fact, you can build you can build your home booth by getting those uh, what do they call them those those PVC I don't know the the stuff you get at home hardware home or Home Depot. Where's my hands here? But that you know the, those plastic round things and they're like like two dollars each and you can build a little frame and you hang over um, uh, moving blankets on it and it's great. It's not for soundproofing. It does help a little bit with soundproofing, but they are great for. Um, uh, just cover up the roof as well. Um, st you still need a quiet, quiet area, but those things are great. I've seen a couple of, there's a guy doing uh, audiobooks. In fact, he's doing a ton of audiobooks right now. And that's the studio he's using those PVC tubes and connectors that you get dirt cheap at the, the hardware store with moving blankets over. And he's working all the time. In fact, it's his full-time job now. I'm so proud of him. Um, and you know, 
I'm amazed that he came up with the idea better. Um, basically, make you're making a, a, a fort, you're making a fellow fort. That's what you want to do. Uh, do original character work like animation in Canada. Uh, improv, take improv classes. Um, 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 Second City, um, any of the those kind of things. Uh, part of part of the work you do if you're taking those programs is working on character. Um, I we have a, our level three with VoiceBot is about uh, character. It's not about doing animation. It's about character. But what it is is, and I talked about it briefly earlier, where every you have about 25 characters in your body already. It's it's enhancing those characters. The way you talk to your boss, the way you talk to your four year old, the way you talk to your dog, the way you talk to your spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend uh, is different. But it's still part of you, and using those as part of your, your your character development uh, is a great way to start. And we, and also there's, I'll give you a tip right off the bat, come up with five characters. Five characters are, you need a villain, you need a hero, you need an old person, you need a young person, and you need a weirdo. Those are your five main characters to start with. And I would start with somebody that you already have in your body. Uh, it's gonna make your life so much easier. Uh, and there's some great animation classes out there in Canada and the US. Uh, I don't know if, if anybody goes down to LA anymore. No, he gets not. Susie Blue down there. She might be retired now, but she's amazing as a, an animation coach. Um, ADR dubbing work. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Look it up. I mean, any ADR dubbing work I've done, I've been I've just been asked to do it. So I, I haven't had to search that out ever. And, um, but uh contact Funimation and see what they say. Uh, again, do the whole the whole R&D thing. Hey, listen, I'm just starting out and I would really like to do this down the road because I think it'd be a blast. Uh, so uh, can you tell me a bit about it? You know, try that and see what, see what comes up with it. And if you do get some information, let me know because that's a really good question. I know a lot of people like doing that. Um, ADR dubbing work is basically you're the people talking in the background. Um, and ADR also means when you're, you know, if you, there's been loud noises when you're shooting something um, and you have to do it over again. That's called dubbing as well. Um, but yeah, mostly it's background work. It's most background vocal work is what it is. Uh, the people that are not talking in the restaurant when you're having your big scene um, or in the same with, with uh, animation. Uh, do as much work as you can. The best way to get from non-union to union, do as much work as you can. Uh, there's a ton of non-union work out of there. I know people that are making a great living doing non-union. My recommendation is basically when you start doing union work and you have to pay permits and you're paying a lot of permits, maybe it's time to, to think about union. But um, I, I wouldn't, it's not going to make your life easier becoming union if you're not ready. So do as much union, non-union work as you can. If you're finding yourself auditioning for union jobs and you get them, and you can as a non-union person, you just have to pay a permit fee. But if you're paying a lot of permit fees, then maybe it's time to consider you joining the union. The, don't get me wrong. The union is great. They've got medical, dental, all kinds of great things like that. But there's no sense joining if you're not ready. Um, uh, and you might as well just, you know, you might as well just do as much non-union as you can until you're ready. People keep chiming in here. Okay. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. Uh, can I recommend a DAW? Depends on how much experience you have. I would say uh, Audacity is free. Uh, also, GarageBand is free. I like free. <laughs> and they'll both teach you how to, how to use it, how to edit, and things like that. Uh, and they're both very simple. And there's a ton of stuff on, on YouTube on how to use both of them. And they're both free. And, and you might as well start with free. And, and once you get used to it, if you're finding it's not doing enough work for you and you're starting to get really busy, then you get into one of the, the more expensive kind. But even you know, Reaper is a, an inexpensive, uh, robust service. Uh, Pro Tools is, is sort of the, the industry standard. And uh, Pro Tools is... Uh, a lot more expensive, but it's it's um, uh, it's 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 an industry standard. So you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with with major industry people. That's sort of where you want to go eventually. But it's a lot more complicated, a lot more than you need. It's more for recording music and mixing music. So you don't really need to go that far. Um, uh, Reaper is probably fine, um, and that one, uh, Twisted Wave, is another one that works on Mac, and it's probably about the same price, maybe a little more than Reaper. They're both under hundred bucks. Um, so both of those would be good ones to try. 
Um, but the thing is, is getting used to using them and editing. That's going to be the two keys. Um, in terms of focus and time, what mix of training, looking for additions and creating your own work would you recommend? <laughs> okay, here, here's, here's my rule. Um, and, this, and this works for performance period. And, and I, as far as an actor goes, it works as well. I find it takes you three years to become, to, be, become, to do anything. Three years is the magic time. Um, it's, it's the amount of time, it's not, you're not gonna work for three years. It's, it's, before, it's three years before people start taking you seriously. Um, because, you know, people come and go, uh, people go, when I was living in Los Angeles, people come down to LA for pilot season and then they disappear and it's like, eh, okay. So yeah, they were kind of neat, but they're, they're gone. Uh, so you being around, it's, you're starting a business. So you being around for three years so that people know that you're there available, that's what's important. So in terms of focus and time and mix of training, looking for auditions and creating your own work that I would recommend. Keep in mind, this is an art form. You're doing this for fun. You're doing this because you love it. You're not doing it because you're gonna make a lot of money. You won't. Um, and as long as you're trying to do it to make a lot of money, you might, but chances are you won't. So you need another way to pay the bills. So do this for the love of doing it. Do this till you're tired and then rest. Don't do it till you're discouraged. We talked about this on Tuesday as well for acting. It's the same animal. Do this because you love doing it. If you took piano lessons when you were five years old and you had to practice an hour every day and you hated it, you're probably not playing piano now. If you played the piano when you were five years old and you couldn't wait to get on the piano and you played for hours and hours and hours, I'll bet you you're playing the piano now. It's the same type of thing. Do it as an art. Do it as an art form and you're trying to create and you're trying to come up with fun because also that'll help keep you away from trying to do it right. If you're trying to do it right, it gets very stiff and it, and it becomes very hard and you start furrowing your brow and it's like, eh, eh, and that's not it. It's art. And yeah, you have some angry art, but have some fun art and keep it as a fun thing. Play, 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 you know, do everything you were told not to do in grade one. That's what this is. Everything you were told not to do in grade one, this is what this is. And you're doing it for your own fun. This is your own private sandbox that you can do anything you want, anything, and see what comes out of it. That's what it is. So what you feel good about um, training, uh, looking for auditions, creating your own work. And the reason I bring that up for that is because you don't want to make it a grind. You want to make this fun. You want to make this enjoyable. You want to, this is art. How many painting classes do you take before you can draw that, that masterpiece? I'll bet you the stuff that Picasso's mom put on the fridge probably looked like crap. Mind you, some people think it did later too. But, but the thing is, is that when you're starting out, you're just learning the skills, and, but you're still learning the skills to have fun. And that's what the objective is. Um, and I'm sure that's not a great answer to that question, but I'm, I apologize. Any advice for making a contract for a freelancing project in voice acting? Uh, or at least some protection from someone using your voice for a decade. <laughs> Ask a lot of questions. Where is it being used? What is it being used for? How long is it going to be used? And as you're asking each of those questions, two things happen. Number one, you're beginning to think, okay, this is a bigger project than I thought. And remember, they're paying for your brand. If I'm doing one commercial and it runs forever, it's not $250. Um, but also as you ask these different questions, they will start to realize, oh, wait a minute, this may be more, there may be more here, there may be more here. So don't find a list of questions. We, we talk about it in one of our classes, we talk about the questions you should ask when you book a job, you know, uh, and just some of them are, you know, how many, how many commercials are, let's say it's commercials, how many commercials are there? Where will they run? For how long? Like when I say, where will they run? Will they run in Canada, United States, worldwide? Will they run on the internet? Will they run on TV? Will they run on radio? Um, those kind of questions will help you come up with an idea. Okay, this is way too big. I'll get back to you. I'll give you an answer in, in an hour tomorrow or whatever. And then give somebody a call and just say, okay, listen, I just got this. And there are services out there um, where they will help you negotiate a contract or just be, feel free to email myself or somebody like that, uh, just to ask. And, uh, and if they're not, if they don't want to 
help you or they're not able to help you, they'll tell you. But the thing is, don't be afraid to ask the question because that'll give you an indication. And also the person asking how big a job this is and what you should be charging, uh, even if you don't have the answer right away. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Is Tap VAP a free service or do you require a membership? You do require a membership. And, uh, oh, hold on a second. I had another screen here. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to it. How do we do this here? This is all hard. Anyway, um, oh, the other thing I got to tell you about, or did I tell you about this? Uh, Voice Spot 25, if I don't keep telling you this, I get in trouble later. Um, if you do want to take one of our classes, go to the website. Uh, there's two things to be in, keep in mind. They have, we have early bird prices, which is, I think if you book it more than two weeks in advance, you get a discount. But also one thing we don't put on the website is that we're Voice Spot 25, which will save you $25 on each of the classes uh, or on your next class. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well. And we only promote that on external stuff like this. Uh, okay, so now to VapTap. Um, VapTap is a membership. You don't pay for the membership, but you do pay for the, uh, for the workouts. And I think the workouts, and Yvonne can, can tell me, I think what he was saying, the one this Saturday, which I'm not sure if it's full yet or not, uh, it, the acting one is I think $10, but normally they're $20 for a drop-in uh, for the two hours. And, or you can buy a, a packet of uh, five for $50 or 10 for a hundred dollars. And therefore each of the drop-ins are only $10 each. So it's very, very reasonable. And you're working with some pretty incredible coaches. Um, just some of the, the, the background uh, that uh, five or six of the coaches there have alone is, is pretty amazing. And we're not trying to teach you acting, but just by watching the other actors work and by the coaching you are going to get, it's pretty spectacular for 10 bucks. Uh, and the other thing too is give it a try, try it out. And if it's not what you like, move on. And I think that's the same with, we talked about earlier on as well. Always check out classes and always check out um, coaches. See if you, if you click with them, if you don't click with them, don't take the class. Don't work with them. Just because somebody says, hey, this guy's great. Don't work with them if you don't click. If you don't click, you're not going to get anything out of it anyway. Um, okay, getting a coach, should you get someone specific to a genre, i.e. T for commercials or narration, or should you get a coach specializes in a bit of everything? Um, I, I personally, I think you should work with as many coaches as you can. If you want to do animation, there's some great animation coaches out there. Um, uh, like voice spot is, is, a, is a more of a general class. Uh, and we do get into specifics when you get into the more advanced ones, but, um, yeah, uh, like I say, work with as many coaches as you can, uh, and work with ones that you, that speak to you. Uh, and I, I don't mean speak to you in the sense that say, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great. That's not what I mean. I speak to you in the sense that what you understand, what their belief system is and where they're coming from and what they're trying to get across. And you connect to that, uh, because frankly, all the, the, the best coaches I know have worked with many coaches and they've taken the best things that they've learned. And I certainly have myself. Um, uh, and what I bring to my coaching is what I, what works for me and what works what I've stolen from basically every coach I worked with. Um, so it, it's both, it's both ways. It, it's both ways. I would, if, if you find a coach that's working for you, stick with them, but don't be afraid to, to move out and look at a different coaches. Different coaches have different philosophies. Um, okay. Um, union members also can come up with their rate card or what they get paid is set by ACTRA. So uh, ACTRA has a, as a, as a base rate, it's what they call scale. Um, for example, um, and, and I charge, for example, I charge double scale. So I charge twice that, um, but I, don't be afraid to look at the ACTRA rate card. And you can, I think you can see that on their website because just their base rate is not a bad place to start even if you're non-union because uh, all the rates are pretty close but you can find rates online as well. So uh, utilize that um, too, uh, because it's, it's, um, um, it gives you something to work from. And the, the non-union rates nowadays are not that much different than the scale rates by ACTRA. The difference with the ACTRA is you get things like residuals and, um, and you get medical dental and stuff like that. But it's, it's the, and you can create your own residuals even as a non-union uh, participant because you because you're going to ask those questions when you say how many commercials are you doing how long is it going to run so if you're charging let's say 250 a commercial and it's going to run for two years I would at least for uh, multiply it by four 
uh, because that's a heck of a long time. Like normally a commercial is expected to run 13 weeks. That's normally what it is. So if it's going to run for f two years or whatever it is, I would, if it's going to run for a year, I'd at least double it and maybe more. And if it's going to run for more than that, you know, again, double it again. And if it's running on TV, radio, internet, again, you want to keep bumping it up. So you don't have to be a union member to, to, uh, to put those rates up there. But that's what I say, ask those questions up front. Do international markets look for Canadian accents? Yes. Uh, or would it be more uh, standard American accent? Uh, both. Um, I was hired in, in uh, Los Angeles to play a, uh, a captain in a World War II um, um, video game because I was Canadian, <laughs> because they wanted a Canadian accent in this guy. And, but they didn't have any A's or uh, boots and a boots or there's nothing like that. They just wanted the more clipped, the more, that's all they were looking for. But yes, yes, they are looking for Canadian accents. The more, the more you can do in your toolkit, I want you to start thinking about it as having a toolkit. If you've got a Canadian accent, well, what is a Canadian accent? Holy craps, there's like 15, 20 at least. Um, the more accents you can do within your language, the better. Uh, American, a flat uh, Midwestern American or standard American, what they're talking about here. Um, make sure you've got that because you're going to start working south of the border if you're working on camera or in voice. Um, that's what they call for. If you're doing work out west in Alberta, they like the the the, the standard American as well, um, even though it's Canada. Um, if you can do uh, if you can do East Coast, if you can do Newfie, if you can do uh, Northern Ontario, believe it or not, is a different accent. If you can do, uh, but make sure you're doing it right. Don't just say, I, don't do the stereotypical because we talked about stereotypical accents before. Um, uh, and in Canada, you want to be able to do Canadian accents. Although if you're from Toronto, um, that can also be a little bit like uh, Buffalo. Um, Cause they're almost looking for Canadian accent there in Minnesota is more Canadian than Canadian. <laughs> I had to do a season of Fargo, uh, third season of Fargo. There's my plug. Third season of Fargo, I was in third season of Fargo. And we had to learn how to do uh, Minnesota. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's more Canadian than Canadian. Uh, okay, how do you create a cheap studio, $500 or less? Okay, uh, this is a plug. Look on, uh, on uh, um, um, Long and McQuaid. I love Long and McQuaid. They're not the only ones out there. There's many out there, but Long and McQuaid's, uh, um, you probably find this on Amazon too. There is a thing called um, Scarlet. It's a um, use, use the focus rate, focus rate, uh, Scarlet. And it's, uh, I think it's a single, a single one, but it's, um, and, and a lot of people use the focus rate Scarlet's for, I, I use it, I have a 212, which basically has two inputs, two mic inputs for uh, uh, for a standard three pin microphone. And, um, but they also make a package that has headphones and a microphone and 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 the the processor you plug into your computer because it's not a, it's not a USB mic. Uh, and I think it's about 350 bucks. Uh, and all you need now, is some of that those tubings and you make the the big stand-up box and then you put over the uh, um, moving blankets which are ten dollars each and under five hundred dollars you've got a studio um yeah you got to be creative <laughs> what type of mic uh, oh yeah uh good 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 question and i meant to bring this up earlier on i didn't know it depends on the experience you have uh whether this even makes a difference there's there's, there's two types of microphones Aside from the USB and the and the and the VL, VLR, or the, the three pin, um, is dynamic and condenser. A dynamic microphone is the microphone singers use, that radio announcers use. Um, it's a more robust microphone. Um, if you're going to be talking loud, if you're a loud talker or you get excited, a dynamic microphone is probably one you want. The Condenser microphone or the large diaphragm that this person is asking about is um, it's like this one is this is a condenser microphone and what that does is allows you to do more intimate work and you can get very quiet and gentle and it, and it picks it up more. The, there's a diaphragm inside it. There's a circle which I don't think you can see, but it's about that big around, 
and it picks up every nuance. Now, with that kind of a microphone, um, it picks up more room noise, it picks up more sound around. Um, it's a very nice microphone if you're gonna do intimate work, if you're gonna do audiobooks, if you're gonna do, not to say you can't with the dynamic as well, but it's just a much more uh, romantic and more gentle microphone, but it picks up more of the sound in your room. Um, a dynamic microphone is more specific. It's, it's really, it's coming, it's pointing right at you. And so even though it's, it's better for loud, uh, it also doesn't pick up as much room noise. So if you've got, if you're in a room that isn't, if it's um, not very quiet, a dynamic microphone might be a better, better choice. But um, I have both and I use different ones for different things. Um, but frankly, I sound better on this one. So I use this one for these kind of things. So you'll think I'm good. Uh, but that's the idea. That's the difference between dynamic and a large diaphragm microphone or, or condenser microphone. Cause you, one's more intimate and one is louder, but it also doesn't pick up as much room noise. So, uh, and the nice thing about Long and McQuaid before, and you, you could do this with Amazon as well, um, is you can try them out. If you don't like it, send it back. They'll take them back. Uh, the, the Long and McQuaid before I used to be able to rent them for like $5 for a couple of days. And which was great because um, you could try it out. And if you didn't like the sound, you take it back and get something else. Um, and, and just keep renting until you find something you like. But particularly if you're gonna get into it where you're starting to spend, because you can get into, like you're getting into good microphones about $250, $300, but you're getting into really good microphones around five grand. Uh, if you're gonna be spending five grand on a microphone, you wanna try it out before you take it. You're not gonna just spend that money on it. Um, so hopefully that, that helps you there. Are the rate cards different for union versus non-union? Not really. Um, they're different in the sense that one has more residuals, but as I was saying, for non-union, um, you want to start incorporating. And also, here's the something, and I'm glad I just thought of this now. Uh, you inspired me. Don't forget to charge for your home studio. If you're doing work from home, have a home studio charge. Uh, just because you're doing it from home, oh, I can do it. it there's no cost for the studio. No, there is a cost for your studio. You're paying for your studio. You're paying for your microphone. You're paying for your, your, your computer. You're paying for whatever. So make sure there's a charge. It doesn't have to be a lot expensive charge. Like studios will charge, depending on your market, between $100 and $300 an hour. You know, if you throw a $25 in home studio charge, that's not unreasonable. $50 home studio charge is not unreasonable uh, because you do have home studio costs. So why would you not add that in there? Now, if you want to put it in for a client that you really like, and you can say non-studio or home studio cost $50, special client, no charge. You know, you, you can always give them a break on it if you want to look, you know, uh, if you want to look better, if you want to give them a, a bonus, but always put it on your, um, on your invoice that there's a home studio charge. Um, it's, it, it's just a, a fact of, of life of doing the work. Um, can I say a company's brand in my demo reel, Scotiabank? Yes, you can. Uh, I would not use addresses because you don't want to seem small town. You don't want to say in most jaw Saskatchewan, they'll say, oh, this person's from Saskatchewan. Not that that matters anymore, but you don't want to use location because why could they say uh, Scotiabank in Portland, Oregon? You know, who knows where, where the Scotiabank is? Yeah, so don't use addresses. Client names are fine addresses don't use addresses it, and it's not needed anyway it's not going the address is not going to be a part of your performance so you don't need it uh uh brand names they're fine uh what were the pay to play websites that you recommended again uh i'm going to go back up here and have another where's my other thing here sharing I stop sharing here because i did have another slide i want to show you <laughs> Uh, hi, Joanna. Um, let's see, where is it here? Share screen uh, here. And from beginning. Yes, I'm learning how this works. Okay, so that's that. Um, You're doing great, Dan. Yay, thanks. I'm doing this all myself. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's, here's some ones you can write down because uh, I can't uh, copy them and throw them in the chat. So tap VAP, theactorsplace.org is the website. 
Voices.com is the is the pay to play. Again, they're, they're a good resource. There have been some issues with them. Just make sure you read the fine print. You can get on them for free. That's fine. Voices123, same thing. Um, you can get on there for free. Read the fine print. Uh, edgestudio.com, they have classes. Again, be careful with the classes. I'm sure that some of them are good. But one thing that edgestudio.com has great, they have thousands and thousands of scripts. If you want to just practice and play and goof around and stuff, they are fantastic at scripts all over the place. Um, ebosscanada.com, every once in a while they have a posting for, for jobs and stuff. Same with mandy.com. But I'm thinking uh, both of the, I'll, I know a lot of those they get off Facebook. Um, so if you're looking for jobs, you can find them on Facebook. You can find them on, uh, I would stay away from, um, uh, not Kijiji. What's the other one? Um, I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, just, just buyer beware. Don't, yeah, we, we don't go anywhere anyway, cause we're all stuck at home, but yeah, just, just, just look after yourself. Um, and, um, um, but yeah, you can check out mandy.com and ebosscanada.com again. Yeah. Um, the resources out there. And, uh, and of course, voicebotwcs.com. That's a great one to go to. They're cool people. Um, it will be changed this year to voicespot.ca. Um, WCS is Wilmot Communication Services. And back when we first started doing the, uh, the service back 25 years ago, it was Wilmot Communication Services. Voicespot came later. And so we associated the two together. Uh, but nobody knows who Wilma Communication Services is, any, is anymore anyway, so we're going to just shorten it to voicebot.ca. Um, and there we go, voicebot 25, receive $25 off your next class, and oh, there's voicebotwcs.com again, good. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this and move back for questions. Uh, share screen, questions, there we go. Um, Is there an exercise to make your voice heavy to light or sweet? Oh God, <laughs> how much time we got? Okay, we got. Yeah, we can do some of this. Um, warm up first of all. Do your warm ups. Um, okay, I'll give you an easy one. Foghorn. Make a fo foghorn noise. Hold on, I got some people in here. Admit all. There's still people coming in. They probably left for coffee and came back. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, so foghorn. So you're making a foghorn noise. Uh, and just in your choice. What happens to a lot of us is when we when we get nervous, we talk in our throat. And so our voice goes up a little bit and we start talking up here. So you want to bring your voice down into your tummy. You want to open it up. So one exercise is I tap different parts of my thing. Just tap at the top of your head and just make the noise. Uh, then, uh, 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 and you're not forcing it down, you're just opening it up so it comes down. You want to be speaking from your tummy. Always want to be speaking from your tummy. If you find your voice gets high, it's because you've gone into your throat because you're constricting your vocal cords. And when you constrict your vocal cords, your voice goes up. So you don't want to do that. It's not good for your vocal cords and it hurts after a while. So keep it down, keep it open. And it doesn't matter how your high your voice is naturally. You'll know when you're actually squeaking, when you're going up because you're, you're, you're tensing your vocal cords and you're tensing your neck. So you want to open everything up. And that's one of the reasons we do a complete physical warm up is to open up your whole body. And I, and I prefer performance uh, standing up. And except for audiobooks, there's no reason you shouldn't. Um, I can do a six-hour session standing up. I'll have a stool maybe to lean on in between takes or something. Uh, audiobook, they're generally only four-hour sessions, but <laughs> it's hard standing up for four hours straight because an audiobook, you're sort of working the whole time, whereas other projects, you sort of do something, and then you listen back to it, and then you do something, you listen back to it. Um, so standing up is going to help you bring your breathing. Um might as well touch on this right now too. What the heck? I'll give you a I'll give away the farm. Uh, you want to breathe from your tummy as well, because what happens is you start getting into these gasping noises. <laughs> so you want to take a deep breath from your tummy through your nose, hold it for a second, and then start your performance. Because then you've already you've you've supported the breath. And then when you take another, when you take your next breath, it'll be supported the same way through your nose. You won't be doing the <gasps> Because that gasping noise is really hard to edit out of your your, your copy, so you got to get used to breathing. But warming up is going to help you with that. Uh, by the same token, uh, 
one of the giveaway secrets. Um, big problem is sticky, sticky mouth. Uh, and when it's winter or you're in dry climates or in uh, uh, any kind of uh, a studio or any kind of eating. So did you guys get um, I didn't get it, but anyway. Uh, so you, anything with, especially in the wintertime, any kind of heating is going to dry out the room. You're going to dry out your mouth and your mouth is going to start having, your teeth is going to stick to your lips and you're going to get these little noises when you're, when you're recording, particularly really intimate stuff you're going to get. And engineers hate cutting those things out because they're impossible. So two things you need to do. You need to drink water regularly regularly not just before you're working all the time drink water it's just a just because you want your body to be used to it otherwise if you just drink it just before you do a session you'll have to go to the bathroom half the session so you drink it all the time that's just part of your routine now now that's the first thing the second thing is uh and then when you're drinking water while you're working you just sip it don't gulp it just sip it or you're going to burp you don't want to burp second thing is granny smith apples I hate Granny Smith apples, but they work like a charm. You take little nibbles of them and you eat them and it cleans all that stuff out of your mouth, uh, all that stickiness out of your mouth. And that reduces the, the click, 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 clicks. Because if you, when you're editing your work, if you take too much editing, it sounds a little unnatural. So the more you can do naturally by breathing properly and by hydrating and eating a Granny Smith apple or nibbling on it, I can make one Granny Smith apple last for a six hour session. No problem. So you don't have to eat the whole thing like chunk, chunk, chunk. You just take little nibbles of it. And it doesn't turn brown nearly as quickly as some of the other ones. Anyway, and don't have anything that dehydrates you. No caffeine, no alcohol, no smoking. You have all of that stuff after the session's over as your treat. Don't do it before the session because it will dry out your mouth as well. Uh, the other thing is, if you don't want to do the Granny Smith apples or drink the water, you can put Vaseline on your teeth. And that's gross as hell, but it works. So you have an option. Um, okay, light or sweet. Um, don't try, I, I'm going to make one more thing there. Try to make your, change your attitude as opposed to try to change your voice. So if you want to be lighter or sweeter, think gentle as opposed to, I'm going to be sweet because it's not natural. Be gentle. Think, think, of, think of ideas like that, something from internal. Don't try to change your voice, change your attitude. All right. Um, where do I find auditions? We talked about that. Uh, you can find them online. You can pay to play. Uh, um, uh, I, I still would work, try to work on finding people that you know that you can do work for around you and maybe in the, an area that you work already. Um, I've met people who have done things like um, uh, talking billboards, um, um, where people drive by and they tune into a, an FM signal and it's a five minute commercial for whatever the product is uh, for a new housing development or whatever. I mean, the sky's the limit. It's just start thinking about wherever there's audio, there's a work possibility. And the sooner you start thinking of these things like, oh, I could do one of the first jobs I had was at a Canadian tire in Calgary um, where they were playing music and, uh, and they had some kid who was, you know, his voice was changing and he'd come on and saying, you know, whatever, um, baseball's on sale in aisle four for the next half hour. And I thought, you know what, I could go in and do those ahead of time and, and record them. And they only paid me $25 a pop, but this was also years ago, you know, in the last millennium. Uh, and I did that for about three years and I would, they would give me, um, you know, 25 or 30 a week to do. Uh, and I would just record them on a cassette and give it to them and they would just play them whenever they needed them to. So just coming up with a, an idea, I, uh, coming up with an idea on how to, uh, wherever there's audio, come up with an idea on how you can get your voice in there. Um, and that's what it is. And it's about a real person in a real place having a real experience. Uh, best place to find soundproof blankets in Canada. Um, <laughs> any moving company, they'll sell them to you for 10 bucks a pop. <laughs> um, uh, and chances are you might even have blankets around the house you can use too. Uh, when you're starting out, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, what are or where can one find good voice warm up exercises? Thank you. Um, singing, humming, uh, don't clear your throat. Never clear your throat. That hurts your throat. So humming, singing, um, tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, any kind of tongue twisters. They're all over the internet. I don't know if things internet. You're going to need a computer anyway, right? 
just so you can do your uh, practicing. So when you're on it, go to tongue twisters and type them up, or you can, uh, I hand out tongue twisters at VAP. Uh, I also hand them out of our classes too, but you know, uh, you don't have to take my tongue twisters. Here's what, here's a tip. Here's another secret I'm giving you. I give away the farm. I get such trouble, but my, my person who helps me out is not here. So I can do whatever I want. Whatever word you can't say, whatever word, how is the time here? Okay, good. We're still good. Whatever word you cannot say. And sometimes it's not just one word. Sometimes it's a combination of words. Is this a sociology university degree? I have a hard time saying, is this, I have a hard time saying, uh, sociology university degree. Uh, so I've put those together. That's one of my warmups. Find words or phrases you cannot say and use those as your warmups. February holiday, I cannot say it. So I, the day that I don't do February holiday as a warmup is the day that I have a commercial with 25 February holidays in it. Um, uh, right wing radio talk show host, I cannot say it. So that's one of my warmups, a right wing radio talk show host. Um, find and you're going to be more aware of it now that you're thinking about it. But every once in a while, you'll say something saying, oh, that was weird. And everybody's mouth is different. Everybody's brain is different because it's not just your mouth. It's your brain as well. Tongue twisters work both aspects of it. And it's also what you see going into your brain coming out of your mouth. I'm dyslexic. So certain words are more a problem for me than others just because I flip them around all the time. So... Um, is this a sociology university degree may be no problem for you, but because the way I grew up, the way I learned how to speak and the way that my brain works, it's a big problem for me. So that's my warm up. So uh, I've come up with a whole bunch of warm ups that I do uh, that work specifically for me. And I would suggest you do the same thing. Find the things you can't say, find the words and phrases you hate and make those your warm ups. Because if you can, if you can beat those, you're golden because nobody can throw them at you. And if they do throw you a new one, new warm up. Um, okay. Um, what uh, equipment do I need to connect with a recording studio from your home in real time? Um, Source Connect is what you're thinking of. Um, ISDN is almost obsolete. In fact, it probably isn't it's too expensive anyway. So uh, Source Connect is the big one. There is a, a free version of it called Source Connect Now. Uh, some studios say they use it. I doubt it because it's not very stable. Um, Source Connect um, standard is the one that voiceover performers need. Um, and it costs, I can't remember, I think you can buy a one-year subscription for 100, 600 bucks or something, or 50 bucks a month or something like that. Um, the, the Source Connect uh, Pro uh, is what the studios need. You don't need that as a performer, but um, that's not something you're going to need right away. I wouldn't get into that until you're ready. Uh, chances are, oh, and I did want to talk about uh, auditioning on your phone. Um Biggest problem I find with people auditioning on their phone is they make the same mistake. First of all, when you're on a microphone, you want to speak out of your mouth. You don't want to, uh, anybody got our voiceover tip this week. It's about speaking outside of your body, get the energy out. When we get shy and we are learning a new language or whatever, we tend to talk inside our mouth. And the only time that that works is if you're Batman and even Batman uses, um, EQ and compression so much so that you can understand what he's saying, because normally nobody's going to understand a word you're saying when you're talking like this. Um, so you want to get it out of your mouth. But when we're shy, learning a new language, uh, not confident in what we're doing, we tend to talk inside our mouth. So get used to talking outside of your mouth, actually visualize the words coming out of your mouth. So you want to be about four to six inches away from your microphone normally, depending on what, what kind of microphone you're using. For your phone, it's the same animal. First of all, find out where the microphone is on your phone. Just talking like this isn't enough. On my phone, it's on the bottom here. So, uh, or is it in the back? Anyway, find out where it is. And, and, and again, you want to give yourself four to six inches away. If you're too close, it gets over and it sounds like this. And they're terrible auditions because nobody will listen to it. Uh, so you want to be about four to six inches away from it. Oh, and I did want to tell you programs you can use for, at least for iPhones. Um, um, uh, vocal Pro, Pro Vocal, oh God. And I even have this stuff written down, believe it or not, but I'm going to have to look it up because I don't know where it is. Um, and this works for iPads and iPhones. I, I'm sorry I don't have it for the other guys. Uh, th these might even work for them as well. 
Uh, where is it here? My audition, nope. My audition is one you can use. Okay, Voice Record Pro. It's free. It works like a charm. And it's wonderful for iPhone and iPad. Um, and again, I don't know if it works for both iPhones and also Androids or not. Uh, another one is iAudition. Uh, I have used it a few times. I don't like it as much as, as Voice Record Pro. There's a lot more things you can do with Voice Record Pro. You can record it, change the format to MP3, and then email it right from your phone. Um, listen back to it first before you send it out too, because I heard a lot of crap. Um, so that is it. So anyways, keep it about here. Again, you still want to have the treatment. So you want the curtains or you want to be in your closet when you do it but just don't be too far away and don't be too close. Be about there, about three, four inches is, is probably plenty, okay? Um, I did want to tell you about that, so we did that. Um, did that. We tried setting up Source Connect before, how was it? I did, do, I have done Source Connect. I have the Source Connect now, I've had Source Connect now, which is the free version, I've had it for four years. I've played with other people on it, it sounds great. Um, the only thing is, is if you're gonna use Source Connect, do a direct plug in to your modem. Don't do it on Wi-Fi uh, because the problem with with Wi-Fi is that the signal will dip and jump depending on um, how many people are using that or on your system. Uh, if you're plugged directly in, it's more robust. Um, and because I've got that cord, that's exactly how I'm doing it now. So that even though I'm on high speed dial up, as my father calls it, um, I'm haven't frozen yet and I'm very happy about that. Um, and so I've done a lot of Source Connect where I have not had the studio. It's not, I don't have it in my home studio. Uh, like I say, I have now, I have the free version. I don't have the Source Connect, uh, which is something once I uh, leave my parents and go back to Toronto, I will probably look at getting it. Uh, I think depending on not even just COVID, just beyond, it's, it, I think it's gonna be necessary as a professional. Um, you can still do work in studios. Some studios are still working that way. Um, in fact, I know actors that are auditioning with the phone and booking work and going in and they, they clean the studio up very well. I just did an audio book um, this past summer uh, in a studio. They didn't want to do it from, from home for whatever reason. Um, so you still can do it. You got to be careful, obviously. Take care of yourself. But uh, um, uh, And Source Connect, uh, I've been using Source Connect for, gosh, near 10 years with the studios when I was in LA. I did work in Edmonton all the time when, on Source Connect. Um, it, it's been around for a while and it's getting better all the time. Um, la, 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 la. Uh, what should be included in, on an invoice? Uh, what you've done, uh, obviously your name, how to get, how to send you money. Um, what you would on any invoice, but I would put down the work, what you what the work is and what you're charging for it and why, um, so that they know. Um, here's something, and when you're setting up your business, uh, get an accountant or have a good accounting program. You are running a business. It's not something you, it's a side hustle, yes. It's art, yes, but you're running a business. And the less hassle you can have with running your business, the better. Um, so even sitting down with an accountant up front and figuring it out before you start, even if you're going to do it yourself, definitely do that because just you don't need that aggravation. Again, that's part of the, the problem with doing art is that we tend to leave all this behind and five years later, Revenue Canada or IRS comes after us and it's like, ah, um, you're running a business. Just, you, just do that. Uh, so on an invoice, uh, and they'll tell you that, and, and there's all sorts of invoice templates out there anyway online that are free. But who you are, how to pay you, how to send you money. Um, I'd get a PayPal account, definitely. That just makes life so much easier. Um, um, and, on, and then you can buy neat stuff on Amazon at Christmas time. Um, and put down the things we talked about earlier on, put down the things that you did not charge them for, uh, like home studio, if, if you decide not to. Like if, if they're paying for five commercials and you don't want to charge them the studio, just say studio costs, um, $50 per hour times four, uh, special client, no charge, you know, whatever. So let, let them know that you're giving them a break. Let them know that that's what normally it is and that you've given them a break because they're a good client or that you enjoy working with them. Um, yeah, and how, and how to get a hold of you and, 
do you have any special discounts and you know book me for another session within three months and i'll give you 25 percent off or whatever you know whatever you want to do uh if you can sing should you add that as a character voice or just stick to you straight voice work Yes, I would, um, and 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 the thing is, is that I would also do that as, as in a commercial. I wouldn't. You've got to be clever because they only want to see the commercial. So let's say you're a singer. If you want to do a singing uh, demo, that's a never, different demo. But if you've got a really good voice and you're saying, "Oh, I walked into the room and all of a sudden I saw oh the new table ah or whatever," you know, trick it, you know. Because the thing is, when you're doing a demo, you can do anything you want. So you can take a piece of a commercial and add something to it um, and make it a part of yourself. Don't be afraid to play and have some fun. But um, but yeah, normally you would have a single singing demo would be its own thing. But don't be afraid to add something as a character enhancement or a commercial enhancement as your personal enhancement. I just wouldn't put a lot of it in there. Just make sure it's just there as an enhancement. You still want to focus on that one aspect for each thing, okay? Um, MP3, what format should your audition be in? MP3, uh, for auditions, MP3, WAVE is when you're doing a job and you're sending it, and even then I would ask the client, but uh, WAVE, WAVE is, a, is a bigger file and it's more, there's more to it, but for an audition, MP3 is fine, it's plenty. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. And then MP3 is so good now, not an issue. So there it is. Okay, folks, it's, uh, we're almost done. In fact, we are done. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else I was supposed to give you. Uh, thank you all. Come on back. Uh, put your camera back on if you like. I'm going to try and do, uh, uh, oh, I can give you the plugs, whatever they are. The, um, oh, one thing I wanted to add to you is, um, if you want to be on voice spots mailing list, um, just go to the website, voicespotwcs.com, and there is a thing there to, to add, put your name and information on the mailing list. Uh, I send out a, um, uh, we send out an e-blast a couple of times a month, and in that e-blast, I include a voiceover tip, which is not just for voiceover, it's also for public speaking, anything, and, and building confidence. Uh, we include that um, um and at any time, if you want to get off the mailing list, there's a little thing you can just click on the bottom and just say, hey, had enough, see you later. And uh, I'll curl up in a fetal position for about 30 seconds and then I'll be fine. Uh, don't worry about that. I would, I would, if you want to find out, uh, we also include uh, auditions, uh, special deals we come across. And also we talk about our classes as well, because what's the point of having a website if you're not going to do that? Uh, so there you go. Um, and if you have any questions, by all means, again, going to that website or um, um, I'm going to give you my um, email address. Can I do that in the chat? Uh, I'll give you one through the website, Anthony Dan at voicespotwcs.com. And if you've got any questions, I will try to get back to everybody within um, within. Um, 24 to 48 hours. If I have not, it's not because I hate you. It's because I've gotten buried. Uh, so send me another email. You're not bothering me. I would rather you be able to connect when you have to. As I say, when we started VoiceSpot, it was started as a resource. That's still what we do with it. Uh, we've got uh, coaches all over Canada uh, who work with us. And um, if I don't have an answer, we'll certainly find somebody who does. Thanks for taking uh, time to do this. It was a lot of fun. And uh, nice to see some, uh, some faces I haven't seen in a while. Hi, Elizabeth, um, and Lena, and I see Christina, and Romper, Bomper, Stomper, Boo. Um, good to see you guys, and I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this, and, and thanks for your interest. And by all means, check out the TAP website uh, for TAP and VAP, if nothing else. They're great workouts if you want to do acting or voiceover, or either. If you want to do, uh, even if you want to do voiceover, I would get some acting background and some some play with it, because that will uh, that will definitely help you no matter what. All right. Hey, Dan, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Your email didn't show up in the chat. That's because I didn't really want you to have it. <laughs> Did it not? But thank you, sir, for the uh, this webinar. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, okay. everybody. How about a big, uh, how about a bunch of uh, applause for Dan, everyone? Dan Wilmot, ladies and gentlemen. Are you supposed to be working? I am. I'm, just, I'm taking a brief hiatus to just say thank you just so much for coming, Dan. 
Remember, you can find out, you can get in touch with Dan as well as by through the oh. actor's place. Dan can share his stuff, but you can also get in touch with Dan through the actor's place. I just gave the wrong word. Meetup slash the actor's place. You can find us there. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for coming and for sharing your My wisdom. My pleasure. With Good to talk to everybody. And that's it, everyone. Unless you have any more questions, thank you all for coming. Thank Stay you, safe, Dan. everybody. My pleasure. Stay safe. Great information. <laughs> Hope it helps.